Welcome to Co-Creator Conversations from Co-Creator Circle. In these conversations, we explore the power of connection, creativity, expansion, and innovation. Join us on this engaging podcast as we dive into an evolving consciousness of compassion with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and change makers around the globe from various fields. From each conversation, we uncover insights, find pathways to our own inner strength, and we can connect to co-create a world that benefits all. Tune in for these captivating conversations that spark inspirations and share with us what inspirations you have received. Today, I'm delighted to have a conversation with Neera Anand. Neera has worked as a human resources professional for 37 years. Her work took her to many countries and helped her to experience different cultures. She saw the strengths and challenges faced by people. Knowing her personally, I have followed and been inspired by her work, her life, her passions, and the way that she approaches everything in life. From her homeland in India, she travels extensively to known and little known destinations. And this, I can tell you, is not only in the physical field, but also in the metaphysical, in the spiritual field, maybe something which she doesn't even know that she is traveling in and that she's inspiring. She has retired from her day job, but she's going to explain to us what retirement means for her. She pursues her interests and does volunteer work to help people who are lonely, depressed, anxious, or those who are having thoughts of suicide. You know, Neera, I'd like to start with asking you just a little question. What does retirement mean for you? Okay, so, you know, while, as you mentioned, I had a day job. So while I've retired from work, I haven't retired from life. I actually took early retirement and uh, some people told me, what are you doing? You're going to be so bored. Uh, the one thing that I knew I wouldn't be was bored. <laughs> and uh, now if I reflect, uh, I can, uh, I think I can put all my activities and what I'm pursuing in five buckets. Um, I know it's a cliche, but I truly believe our body is uh, the temple of our soul and we really need to take care of it. I've always been conscious of it. So one part of what I'm doing is looking after my health uh, because I feel without good health and physical fitness, there's nothing. Um, the second part is being intellectually alive and active. So I play bridge, which I find uh, so intellectually uh, stimulating. I'm part of an amazing book club. Um, I've always been fond of reading. and uh, But I find the difference is that when you're reading uh, for a book club, uh, you just reflect and introspect a little more. And I'm always amazed at the diversity of perspectives and opinions which come out during our discussions and it, it's such an education and it just gives me so much joy. Uh, the third aspect, you know, having a purpose in life, giving back. Uh, so I do a volunteering work. Uh, the fourth bucket is developing better self-awareness self-understanding. I'm part of a Gita circle, uh, which I'm um, really grateful for right now. And the last part, of course, is loads of fun. My husband and I love traveling. Um, people energize me. So I love spending time with my family, friends and uh, traveling around the world. So that's what retirement looks like for me right now is so rich you know and you've just literally given uh, like a holistic perspective of life how you are living a vibrant life in so many different ways uh, I also know that uh, you're a grandmother 
and very involved in your grandchildren's lives. And I can only feel how they must be getting inspired by you. You know, because in different parts of our life, we look at, at one another and we get inspired. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted this conversation with you. You know, the one that I'm going to start with is the one that you talked of first, and that is health. I was walking recently in the mountains and I had uh, an uh, injured knee and it was very difficult for me. I was I was a little worried. How will I be able to walk up and down hill? And then I remembered you and I remembered the, uh, the problem that you have had. Uh, how much you used to walk all your life and how, how much you continue to walk regardless of anything. And that that's inspired me, you know. And I said, well, Neera can do it and so can I. And I think that's so important that we listen to one another and we share our stories. Because even a little thing can have such a huge impact. So for that, I really want to thank you, Neera. And I'm going to ask you another question. You said you're enjoying your retirement so much, but did you have to prepare for it? Did you did you think about what you would do after you take retirement from your day job? Certainly some aspects of it. I hadn't actually, you know, structured in my thoughts that I'll have these five buckets. Uh, not at all like that. But um, one thing I've been wanting to do for a long time was counseling but was never able to with uh, my full-time job because uh, regardless of which NGO you want to volunteer in, there's always a minimum commitment of the number of hours that you need to put in. So that was clearly in my mind. Um, but I retired just post-COVID. I even have an organ had an organization in mind where I would have liked to do uh, volunteering. Uh, which works in the area of counseling. But at that time, it was just post-COVID and they had uh, stopped uh, taking new people and training them, etc. And then I got to know about this NGO, Sumetri. This NGO works in the area, uh, it's a crisis intervention center, which uh, works in the area of uh, helping people who are lonely, depressed, or experiencing thoughts of suicide. Um, I have to say that initially when I heard about it, I did have some apprehensions. I wasn't very sure whether at the end of the day I would be carrying a huge emotional burden home and how I'd be able to cope with that. Uh, but actually the reverse happened. Uh, when you are listening to these people, I was just filled with a sense of gratitude for um, everything that I have. So um, I knew certainly that post-retirement, I didn't want to work for money. I knew I needed to continue to look after my health. Um, I knew I wanted to take out time for my self-development, reflection. So uh, but as it's played out, I'm I'm happy with how it's working out for me. So can you share a little bit about uh, the work that you're doing, this volunteer work? You said that you feel gratitude. Uh, I'm sure that the people, uh, I know you can't discuss specific uh, details, but do you get a feeling of how they feel after you have the conversation? Yes, um, uh, definitely. Um, in Sumetri, uh, we have two ways in which anyone who's troubled can approach us. Uh, so they can call in uh, and uh, Sumetri is staffed by volunteers uh, and we take the calls. Um, in addition to that, we have a center in New Delhi, so people can walk in as well if they want to have a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting uh, with a volunteer. Um, how this works is we know very clearly that we are not here to advise people. We feel that the person who is facing the challenge is in the best position to find the solution. 
what we are here for is to just facilitate to reduce their burden of pain so that they can actually find their own solutions and 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 carry their own burden uh, all that people are looking for is someone who will listen to them in a non-judgmental way uh, with empathy and compassion uh before i started this work uh i used to think that a majority of the callers would be people who are old sick lonely while we do have such callers the really alarming fact is that the people most at risk of attempting or succeeding in committing suicide is the age group of 15 to 35 uh mental health is an alarming epidemic right now and, and it's really something that needs to be addressed uh are you seeing anything else happening in society or around you which is helping with the uh, mental health like uh, do you give advice in, well, i know you said not advice as such but do you also suggest things like exercise or walking no we we actually advise nothing uh, there is absolutely no advice in our process but we certainly help them think through the options that they possibly have um uh, we focus in the whole process on feelings getting them in touch with their feelings because what i find is that a caller may be calling for multiple different reasons uh someone may be under financial stress mm, job loss uh physical or mental abuse uh severe poverty uh pressure to uh perform in terms of academics anything it can be a multitude of reasons but what they are looking for is the same thing they just need someone to listen to them uh and in a non like i said earlier in a non judgmental way with empathy and compassion they don't you know- need the advice yeah you know this is very important neera because i know that uh, as a mother when i was uh, whenever i would uh, my daughter would tell me a problem i would immediately jump into giving advice or telling her what to do and then um, a, a friend of mine vinita who's a counselor and she told me no you you should just listen they just want you to listen so this is very interesting because i would think that as a mother or as a grandmother maybe our uh, uh, our roles are different would you say that you also find that as a grandmother and your and of course as a mother of uh, grown up children do you feel that how you approach them or how you relate to them has changed after the way you work or were you always the same no in fact uh, one of the things that happens in the training that we undergo as much as we learn we need to unlearn i was an hr professional for 37 years and believe you me manakshi i've given a lot of advice in my life i don't know if kids or grandkids listen to you when you give advice but when you're an hr professional uh, many of the staff do so yes um, i mean there are uh, in the non volunteering sphere there are some roles when people are coming to you in your advisory capacity yeah but um really after this learning and unlearning process through the somet three training i realize that in the other spheres of life the less advice you give the better <laughs> yeah so this is very interesting you know because uh, you're learning Uh, yeah and learning is also a learning it's a new kind of a learning and you know this is very in- interesting because as we all aging 
I realized that, well, everybody is aging all their lives, but you only feel that when you become a certain age, that uh, we think that everything is, you know, aging seems to imply as if you have become old, as if, uh, and it, it's as if you no longer need to change or learn. But actually what you are showing and what we, are, we experience is that you are always new. Every day is a new day. You have never experienced this day or this age before, right? I so, totally agree with you, Minakshi. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you? Who do you feel inspires you? Who do you learn from? Everyone, you know. Um, I I think uh, I, people give me energy. I love people, and uh, I I would say. Everyone who touches my life teaches me something. Um, while I've had amazing role models in my parents, my children, I, I, I think I am so proud of my children and I have so much to learn from them and my grandchildren. So all my friends. Uh, so I, I don't think there's anyone you can't learn from. Yeah, that's true. I think that's really something that you could just sort of write in golden letters. <laughs> you, know, you can learn from everyone in your life. And you've been to so many countries. How do you feel when you go to a, a country where maybe you don't know the language or no one you know has ever been there? Do you like to plan everything in advance or do you go with just let's see what happens? You know, I'm still like a little kid where it comes to travel. Every trip is so exciting for me. And um, when we were much younger, uh, my husband and I would, uh, you know, just go to the tourist offices of states in India. And we would go and tell them that, uh, please tell us about places where nobody ever goes. And we would just pack our little kids in our car and we just drive off to the unknown. We knew nothing about these places. Uh, there was no planning. Uh, sometimes there weren't even bookings. I have to say that travel over the decades has become a little more complicated, uh, particularly if you're traveling overseas, you know, the nightmare of visas and tickets and, you know, all of that. So I have to say the trips are uh, much more structured and planned now, but my excitement level is the same. <laughs> I'm just so excited about everything that I'm going to see and do. So when you go to places, do you also meet uh, people? Of course, you meet them uh, as tourists, but do you, do you feel you can have conversations with them? Do you get an idea of who they are, what? what moves them, what's important for them, or that's not sometimes, really possible. Hmm. Sometimes, sometimes not, because uh, there are uh, lots of countries where language is a barrier. And, uh, you know, I only have very limited knowledge of, you know, all the languages in all the countries. So that can be a challenge, but you still... Uh, do get to interact with some people and that gives you an amazing glimpse of the diversity, the culture, the customs, the food habits. I'm a major foodie. So, you know, I love to experiment with all the food. I, I remember last year I was in Japan and we were out for dinner in a restaurant and uh, the menus were all in Japanese and, you know, we couldn't make head or tail out of them. And then I suddenly spotted that the neighboring table, uh, you know, which had four men were having very interesting looking food. So I went up to them and I wanted to know what it is they were eating. So, I mean, I try and, uh, you know, they look more embarrassed than I was, but then in Japanese, they told the waitress to give us an English menu, which she did. So, yes, we try, uh, but sometimes it's to a limited extent. Sometimes 
much more. Depends on the country in which you are. You know, when we're having a conversation, Neera, I'm seeing that we are touching so many things. If you look at it, we are touching so many feelings and emotions, you know. Um, to me, that just shows that we live a full life. Uh, very often, especially nowadays, and especially people who mostly look at the mass media news, uh, they get completely caught up with all the pain of the world because news, uh, the mass media news will always show that. Um, what do you feel about that? Like, what do you feel about being happy when so many people in the world are not? Hmm. So I feel actually happiness comes only from within. There is... Um, Happiness doesn't really come from outside. But at the same time, you can't be untouched by what's going on around you. And I have to say, it just distresses me to see the extent of strife in the world uh, right now. And, uh, you know, they say people learn through history, but I don't quite believe it. Uh, for centuries... People have had wars and all that the history teaches you is that in a war, there are no winners. As long as you are playing a win-lose game, there can never be a win-win. Everyone will come out to be a loser. So I, I just feel one can do whatever little bit you can in your individual capacity. So I feel that every thought and action of yours has a ripple effect. So when I'm angry, even if I don't act out on my anger, it still has a negative ripple effect. So we must always be conscious of the responsibility each one of us holds in reflecting on are we co-creating a world of harmony and peace or doing just the reverse, uh, which is not to say that I'm a perfect Zen human being, not at all. I'm a work in progress like everyone else. But um, I think the first step is self-awareness of the impact of your every thought on everyone else. Yeah, that's right. I mean, like you said, if if uh, just like anger can have ripple effects, so then in the same way, if we have peaceful thoughts, uh, that can have a ripple effect also. And sometimes I feel that's the greatest way to actually win a war. If you, like you said, a war can't really be won, but if you have to win, then you have to give the opposite uh, to what you what you are seeing. If 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 you don't like disharmony, then you have to radiate harmony. So when you're going That's around, yeah, when you're going around the world and in, in many ways, physically and also in this way of your work, what do you feel we are co-creating? What do you feel humanity is co-creating? You spoke of history and what people have done. Do you find a difference to what people are co-creating now? I think it's both. So like you said, um, in the media, it's overwhelming amount of strife and wars and everything, you know, that uh, all the dire, horrible stuff that's happening gets into focus. But Minakshi, I know there are people like you who are working in the area of co-creating peace and harmony, a different world. And frankly, I, I believe there is divinity in each one of us. And if each one of us can be in touch with that divinity and the collective consciousness of everyone can bring in uh, peace and harmony, um, it's just we, we, we need to focus uh, on the positive aspects of everything that is around, because there are so many people, Menakshi, like including, like I said, yourself, who are working towards that. 
and you and all the other people who are working with you for, you know, because uh, like, just like what you are talking about, the collective consciousness, it, I'm reminded that there are wars which we know of, but there are wars that we don't know of. You have, you are encountering youngsters, little children, older people, but not really very old people. And maybe there are old people who don't reach out. Maybe they don't know how to reach out even to be heard or listened to, you know? So there's this other war also going on and there's nothing about that in the media. So all the more reason that we, if we stay peaceful and quiet and, and harmonious, we are able to listen to the unspoken, to what people are not being able to share. And I think that's why it's so important that you, um, everything that you're doing, you're managing to do that. You're managing to hear uh, what otherwise people would not have been able to speak. So that's really important and inspiring, Neera, because you're showing that you are not only uh, uh, being able to live a full life, but you're helping others to know the importance of living. I know that people, uh, you're not allowed to speak of your life when you're listening to them, but I really hope that uh, by having you know an inspiration or this conversation like this, more and more people get to know that there's someone that they can reach out to, someone who will just listen, which which even a family member may not, because a family member will always be trying to help. And that help doesn't seem like help. It's uh, what um, someone like you can do uh, to, to really be of help, uh, you know? Do you have anything? What do you feel that you are co-creating? I know it's not to put you on a spot, but what do you feel you are co-creating in this world? So, um, one of the things, and um, you know, I, I I know it's going to sound maybe a little bit arrogant, but what I want to achieve in my life uh, is uh, touch anyone's life that I interact with in a positive way, however small that impact. And it's a work in progress. Uh, you falter, you fail, you're not your best self always. But at least that's the hope that, uh, you know, you, you, you are co-creating or being part of something positive rather than only you know, negative. That's wonderful. I think we can uh, stop the conversation here. But I really want to share what I feel I have received from this. Always you have inspired me, Neera. I've known you for so many years. We have almost grown up together. And uh, you always have a steadying uh, word. Even even when you say something um, and you consider yourself, I know you, you used to tell me I'm impatient, but just one little phrase sticks in your mind. I remember as a teenager, I was very touchy. I would get easily hurt. And you told me one day, I mean, actually, no one's even thinking of you or trying to hurt you or, or not hurt you. They're just thinking of themselves. And that that helped me so much. And I thought, why am I getting hurt by people when they're not even trying to hurt me? And I think this this exactly kind of conversation is therefore so important because you're very you're very straight and you always speak what's uh, what's in your heart and mind, and that has always been the words that you wrote, which are compassion and gratitude. Uh, I feel that you showed the balance between receiving and uh, radiating, you know. And um, yes, I think many people are going to be inspired by this conversation. How to live a full life throughout your life, because we are continuously evolving and growing. Thank you so much, Neera, for this conversation. Thank you, Minakshi. And uh, we can form a mutual admiration society because <laughs> I, I, I feel exactly the same way about it.